Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to pick an Amazon product and stop procrastinating. Now if you can't do that, this might not be the business for you and we'll be breaking down that wall as well and figuring out, hey, maybe you should do something else. Uh, let's get into it guys. Thanks so much for sticking around and uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So here we go. We're going to just, uh, I'm just going to work uh, on my business this morning and I'm going to be talking to you while I do. I'll be doing some product research. Uh, grab yourself a cup of tea, sit down for the next 15 minutes, uh, have yourself a good time. What I wanted to talk to, do, to you about today was the fact that so many people are lacking something, right? It's like, it's like you understand the business intellectually, you understand how it works and why it works, but perhaps you're lacking one thing. Now, one thing that you're lacking is certainty. You have uncertainty about how this might turn out, or about how your sales are gonna go, if you have what it takes to do this, all these kind of things that come up, right? I see a lot of negative beliefs in this space, especially in the comment section, people saying, I don't know if I could do this, you know, whether it's talking to people and they say, I don't know if I could do this. Um, I wanted to break down that wall for you today and um, perhaps push you a little bit harder when spaces where you need to be pushed um, and Hey, I might just come to the realization for you that, hey, this might not be for you, okay? Why don't you do something that you love? Because I'm doing this because I love doing this. The hunt for the products, launching it, seeing those first sales of a new product. To me, I find it immensely satisfying, right? And that's why I can do it every day and I'm not scared, I'm not sick of it, right? It is kind of something that I love to do. So for you, if you don't love the process, this won't go very well because to get through those hurdles and to keep scaling, keep growing, and accept the losses, you have to love what you're doing, right? Um, Tony Robbins has a funny example. He says, uh, you know, how many times would you let your child try to walk before you just say, that's enough, you're done, you're not gonna walk. You say, as many times as it takes, right? I'm gonna, you're, you're gonna walk, right? That's my child, he's walking. And he goes, you know, notice a lot of people in the world walk, right? Mostly everyone walks. Um, that's because that's the, uh, the response it takes to something to get it right and to master it, right? We're pr we're pretty much, if you're uh, healthy and enabled, you can walk because you've mastered it, right? Very few people um, can't walk. And the point he's trying to make there is that you have to keep trying something else, keep trying something else, keep trying something else if it's not working. Right? If you just fall a couple of times on Amazon, you just you can't just go, well, it doesn't work. I tried it. I tried a million times. A million? Name 10,000. Well, maybe I tried a thousand times. A thousand? Name a hundred, right? It's like, well, maybe I tried two things and didn't work and I got upset and I left. Right? That's kind of what we get ourselves into with a very specific way of thinking. So I wanna change your perspective, how you think about it. So what I wanted to do was not just motivate you, I wanted to actually provide clarity today um, and give you some actual examples of what I look for in a product. And if those boxes get checked off, I sell the product. It's really as simple as that. And when I sell the product, no matter what happens, it is an attempt at me scaling my business and I understand that if, even if it doesn't go as I expected, the result turns out slightly different, that's okay because that was just another mini lesson there. I just learned one other way not to grow my business, but I still try, right? So that's what creates bulletproof, successful entrepreneurs, and not even just entrepreneurs, but people in general. People who have passion and they know what their outcome is, and then they combine that with massive action taking. That is the key formula for success and fulfillment. So I'm gonna just look through here. Uh, what I wanted to, I have a couple points and notes taken for today of points I wanna to touch on with you. Um, these are things that if you get these right, you should sell the product. So when you're doing product research, maybe you have a software like this, like Jungle Scout um, or Helium 10, you're doing your product research, you come across something and that idea just sits with you for three months. I've literally had people come to me and go, hey, I've been thinking about selling this for six months. Uh, I've never gotten around to it. It's like had you just started the day you f the day you knew that it was a pretty good product, it would have been already ranked with 65 reviews right now, right? Granted, you knew how to do you know the rest of the process, which I'm guessing if you've been studying this product for six months, you probably it's not that you don't know the next steps, it's just that you haven't done them. Uh, so I'm gonna just kind of look around here, look for some potential ideas. Um, 
and then we'll, we'll just, you know, kind of click into something and start talking here. So this paintbrush kit is kind of funny. I've actually had people ask me if this was a good product idea before for one reason, right? Because look at these organic listings that are ranked here. So they are selling well, despite the fact that they have low reviews. No, not low reviews, but low rating. That's one thing you can focus on, but I'd also focus on the raw number of competitors. So this is a, a, the first place I'd like to give you some of your certainty back, is that when you're picking ideas, don't just make the best product. You have to make the best product and be able to market it as the best product, okay? So there's these changes that you can make to the product that the customer won't even realize until after they've bought it. Well, that's the struggle, is getting them to buy it. It's not letting them know that it's the best product once they have it. That's great if you can do that, but oftentimes the most sold products in the world are not the best sold products in the world. Right? There's always someone who has a super perfect version of something, but they just can't figure out a way to market it. Right? So you need to become an expert in both of those fields. And don't think you need to, oh great, now I need to be a marketer, I need to take on all of this. It's the least of your concerns, right? What I mean by that is you need to pick products where you can sell at your own skill level. So your competitor should be at your skill level. And that's a really funny way of thinking about it. Now I thought about that while I was playing um, Call of Duty actually, because Call of Duty has this thing called, um, it's like play by rank, right? So it's like you will get matched up with people at a similar skill level who have similar statistics that you do, right? So you're not just A, like, the best player in the lobby and like no one else can compete against you. Well, that might be fun for you for a little while, but I think they know that people like a challenge. B, you're not just getting absolutely kicked out of the game, destroyed, whatever <laughs> term you wanna use. You can't even compete because everyone else is so good, right? There's that certain pressure level, and this is flow, right? The, the perfect amount of stress that it becomes challenging but not too hard um, as to that leads to you stopping. Right, so there, that exists within Amazon too. You need to find your flow level, right? Where is that level of difficulty that challenges you, but does not make it so hard that you wanna leave? And oftentimes what I see is I see people going into markets that are way too hard. They get a really bad first impression. Maybe they get hurt, they ordered too much inventory. They thought they could rank it just because everyone else was doing good. And then they have all this inventory left and then that kind of scars them with the process, right? Because they tried to rank in a product where sellers are making sales like this and they have reviews like this. Um, there's this many listings, right? And they're all relevant and they're all in a certain price range. And you came in, you just didn't understand the key concepts and characteristics of a product that you should actually sell. And then that kind of scarred you a little bit. Now that I actually had that happen to me and I had to both physically and in my business and emotionally come over that. Like I had to get myself to the point where I was like, no, I'm gonna use this to empower me. This will not defeat me. This will not bring me down. I refuse to let let myself, you know, uh, mope around or kind of be sad about this for any longer than just the initial period, right? One day, one hour even, not even a whole day. I wouldn't waste a whole day uh, moping around. Spend a little bit of time, go, yeah, I messed up acknowledge the fact that you messed up because just being delusional and saying, well, no, it should have worked. I, you know, it's not my fault. That's not the whole point I'm trying to make here, right? The, the point is almost to break down the delusion and to break down the fact that most of what's holding you back is just yourself. There's no one literally, you know, holding you back like by the shoulders like, no, you can't go work on your computer. At least that's a, it would be a very rare scenario. And I don't think a lot of you are in that situation. The first thing that you're lacking is certainty, right? There's something that you don't understand fundamentally about what to pick, or maybe you had a bad taste in your mouth from this business model of a product you did pick and now it's not working for you. So what I wanted to give you is the exact criteria to use. Um, it doesn't necessarily, we don't necessarily have to find the perfect product idea here, um, just because you'll know what to look for even if I just describe it. So for like, instance, I just clicked on this, like auger drill bit for um, planting. Okay, great. Now the first thing that I want you to understand, and you've heard me say this before, if you've been on this channel before, if you haven't, welcome, thanks for sticking around this long. Um, sure, like and subscribe. You need to have exact customer search demand. So you need to have people actually looking for your product. And again, if you hear me say this a lot, it's just because it's true. There will never be a day where I say, I'm sticking to this earth because of a force other than gravity and I have sticky feet. No, 
you'll hear that gravity exists over and over again because that is the true, you know, <laughs> science. We are sticking to it because there's a force pulling us to it, not because we're literally have little sticky feet and we're walking around on it. And otherwise we'd be ripped off into space. No, like this is the reason I say this so much is because it's true. And then once you have search demand, I want to go back to that analogy of skill level because lately I've been saying lack of high quality competition, but what I'd like you to look for is the fact that, well, for first of all, there's few sellers. So maybe half of page one even is selling the correct product. That's a good way of looking at it. It's a good piece of criteria. Less than half of page one should be selling actually truly relevant products. Okay, now everything will be relevant, right? For instance, I guarantee we could find a product on here. Um, so this is already kind of going against my criteria. Do you notice how we got to the bottom? And the whole page is already filled with bundles and it's filled with the right product. That doesn't leave any room for us, right? This, this leads me to the next question that I want you to ask yourself, which is a little bit different. A lot of people don't do this. Does this customer need another result? And be honest, be in the shoes of the customer. If I came here, would I be satisfied, right? You're telling me that this thousand reviewed, four and a half starred drill doesn't do it for you, okay? Or you're saying that even if the reviews were low, this one with 43 reviews, that one doesn't do it for you because it's half the price and it's, you know, four and a half stars. So even the lowest quality review rating here, 40, right? This one's bundled with something. So now what do you do to get this customer's attention? Well, there's not really much you can do. And that's the point I'm trying to make is once you know what not to sell, you'll have a level of, an, of certainty when you finally do see what to sell, right? What we are looking for is the fact that there's less than, you know, half of this page is occupied. I like to use this analogy of these being pieces of real estate, right? What would one piece of, you know, one acre of land cost in the middle of nowhere in Idaho or something, right? Uh, I don't know, what, 12? thousand, 15,000, if you bargain a little, um, what would it cost in Manhattan? Well, you might not even be able to buy it. Or if you did, it would be millions of dollars, right? Because that space is taken already. And to take that space, you got to knock someone else out of that space. So there's a lot more that goes into it than just simply taking that spot over. And people don't realize that. To get one of these spots, you have to actually fundamentally be better at marketing and at providing a high quality product than the competitor who is there currently. That's the only way to get it is you're, you have to have a good conversion rate. So that means your listing has to be professional. Um, you have to have a higher number of sales than the person before you, which means that you're already converting them and you've already, you know, provided value and the customer recognizes the value and they're purchasing it. So to do that in a space where everything is very similar, you're not going to have an easy time standing out. You may be able to succeed and people time and time again will succeed in spaces like this. But I want to make it easier for you. You know, there's always the route that's shorter. You know, what is that route? And that route is to find products that customers are looking for that no one is providing a high quality result for. Again, I say this because it's true. And then the last thing that I want you to do is I want you to step into the customer's shoes. Okay. When you're a customer and you're shopping here, what do you need? Go figure out exactly what they're searching, right? Go to Magnet, go to Keyword Scout. What is this customer looking for? Not just broadly, just auger drill bit or you know gardening drill bit. What specifically? Auger drill bit 24 inches, right? Well, well, if that's the case, and the biggest one is 17 inches, well, this listing, well, let's act like this one wasn't here. If 1,300 people were looking for the 24 inch one, or even 751, um, 750 people were looking for the 24 inch. Well, now you have exactly what to provide you know it already. So just go provide that. Right? And there's this level of overthinking that happens because you're uncertain and you're procrastinating. You go, uh, it's, it's just too hard. Like, I don't, I don't think I could ever do this because I don't know how to differentiate. I'm not good at this. I'm not good at making listings. Well, most of that can be taken care of for you. Your odds are you're not doing your photography. You're gonna have a professional doing your photography. If you really don't speak English very well, or you just, are awful at writing, you could hire a professional copywriter, right? If you, um, you know, can't optimize your keywords, you can hire someone on Fiverr or Jungle Market to optimize your search. Literally, you can automate this process. And it's as simple as that. And if at the end of the day, this isn't clicking with you, you still are uncertain, then just stop watching the FBA videos because you're just, you're leading yourself on, right? Either take action or just stop. Go find something you actually like to do. 
Now you, you must have some level of interest in this if you're watching these kind of videos. But if you're, you find yourself in that bucket of people who are just procrastinating, can't get themselves to start, hey, I was there, okay? 2017 and 2017, I was studying this business model probably more than I needed to. In the beginning of 2018, I said, you know what, that's it. I'm done, right? I'm done learning. I need to go take massive action. Because knowledge is not power. Knowledge is potential power. Action is kinetic, right? Action is not potential. It is the real thing that we're trying to achieve. So go out there and use what I've covered with you today to gain your certainty back and actually take action on something, right? Even if that something is small, right? $800 order of products. Well, if you could find a market where their customers are looking for something specifically and it's not being provided to them by a professional seller, go provide that for them, okay? That's my, that's my little talk for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, other than that, I'll see you on the channel here tomorrow for another video. Thanks so much. Later.